Sirius is unmistakable because it shines so brightly in the night sky that there is no way to compare it with other stars, especially because in the region of the sky where it is located, there are not many stars that compare to its brightness. Its great brightness is the result of its intrinsic luminosity and its proximity to the solar system. With the naked eye from Earth, it's possible to see only one bright point, but Sirius is actually composed of two stars that orbit each other. The brightest star in the night sky is nearly twice as bright as Canopus, the next brightest. From Earth, Sirius always appears fainter than Jupiter and Venus, and it is visible from almost everywhere on Earth, except latitudes above 73 degrees north. There are other stars that are much brighter than Sirius, some shining up to millions of times more than our Sun, but they are so distant that the light is dissipated by the time it reaches Earth, or perhaps because they encounter a large cloud of gas and dust along the way. Its name is derived from the Greek word serios, which literally means bright or scorching. It was later Latinized to Sirius. Currently, the star is designated as Alpha Canis Majoris and abbreviated as Alpha CMA. The Greek word itself may have been imported from elsewhere before the Archaic period, suggesting a connection with the Egyptian god Osiris. In 1698, Christian Huygens estimated the distance to Sirius at 27,664 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, approximately about 0.44 light years, with a parallax of 7.5 arcseconds. Several attempts to measure Sirius's parallax failed, such as those by Jacques Cassini with six arcseconds and other astronomers like Lacaille and Bessel. Parallax, for those who don't know, in astronomy is a method of measuring distances to celestial objects. To measure the distance to a star using parallax, observations are made at two points in Earth's orbit, usually in January and July. This creates a triangle with the base equal to the diameter of Earth's orbit and the angle being the relative displacement of the star. Using trigonometry, the height of the triangle provides the distance to the star. One can imagine how tiny this angle is. More recently, between 1832 and 1837, astronomers Thomas Henderson and Thomas McClare determined that the parallax value was 0.23 arcseconds. It is now known that the parallax is almost 0.4 arcseconds. The Hipparchos parallax for Sirius has a precision of approximately 0.04 light years, and more recently, the astrometric probe Gaia, with even greater precision, indicates a distance of 8.6 light years. Sirius is located in the constellation Canis Major and is visible in the Southern Hemisphere and much of the Northern Hemisphere. Let's take a closer look at Sirius. With the speed of the fastest current spacecraft, the Parker Solar Probe, a journey to Sirius would take 18,600 years. From Earth, constellations appear flat, but from another point of view, they warp and would be unrecognizable. The Sirius system is one of Earth's closest neighbors, being the seventh nearest star and the closest star to the constellation Canis Major. Sirius is a binary star system composed of two white stars orbiting each other. 
They are relatively young on a cosmic scale, with the age of the system estimated at 230 million years. In the early stages of their lives, it is believed they were two blue giant stars orbiting each other in an elliptical orbit every nine years. The star responsible for almost all the brightness we see from Earth is star A, with an apparent magnitude of minus 1.46. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. It is 25 times more luminous than the Sun, but has a significantly lower intrinsic luminosity than Canopus, Betelgeuse, or Rigel. Being one of the closest stars to our Sun, proximity is the main reason for its brightness. Sirius can be observed even during the day with the naked eye under the right conditions. Ideally, the sky should be very clear, with the observer at a high altitude, at a time when the star is high in the sky, at the beginning or near the end of the day. These observation conditions are more easily met in the southern hemisphere due to Sirius's southern declination. Sirius A is a main sequence star of spectral type A, with a surface temperature estimated near 9,600 degrees Celsius. Sirius A has a diameter almost twice that of our Sun, and twice its mass. However, its rotational speed is relatively low, at 16 km per second, which does not produce any significant flattening of its spherical volume. This contrasts strongly with Vega, which has a similar size but rotates at a much higher speed, 274 km per second, and bulges prominently around the equator. Like our Sun, Sirius A is on the main sequence, fusing hydrogen into helium. It is calculated to have completely depleted its hydrogen stock in its core within a billion years of its formation, and will then evolve off the main sequence. It will go through a red giant phase and eventually become a white dwarf. In a letter dated August 10, 1844, astronomer Friedrich Bessel deduced from changes in the proper motion of Sirius that there was an invisible companion. In January 1862, Alvin Clark first observed the faint companion, now called Sirius B, or affectionately, the pup. The observation of Sirius B was confirmed on March 8th of that same year. Even though it has lost much of its mass in its evolutionary process, Sirius B is one of the densest known white dwarfs. It has the mass of a sun compressed into a volume the size of Earth. The average of known white dwarfs has a mass between 0.5 to 0.6 solar masses and a surface temperature of 25,000 degrees Celsius. A white dwarf forms after a star has evolved off the main sequence and gone through a red giant phase. This occurred when Sirius B was less than half its current age, about 120 million years ago. The original star was estimated to have five solar masses and was a type B star while still on the main sequence, potentially with a luminosity of 600 to 1200 times that of the Sun. This star is mainly composed of a mixture of carbon and oxygen generated by the fusion of helium in the progenitor star. This mixture is covered by lighter elements with materials segregated by mass due to the high surface gravity. The outer atmosphere of Sirius B is now almost pure hydrogen and no other element is seen in its spectrum. Sirius B had a very short life due to its large mass and consequently gravitational pressure consuming all its hydrogen relatively quickly. Only this core remains, which will become colder over time. In reality, this will be the fate of our Sun, but on a much longer time scale of billions of years, since our star does not consume its hydrogen so rapidly. As there is no internal heat source, Sirius B will gradually cool as the remaining heat is radiated into space over the next two billion years or more becoming a theoretical black dwarf, a solid and cold body that no longer emits light or heat.
The two stars are on average about 2.99 billion kilometers apart, approximately the distance between the Sun and Uranus, and orbit each other in a period of 50 years. The interesting thing about this 50-year period around the main star is that Sirius B, in its current position in the orbit, is almost at the apoapsis, which is the farthest point from its orbit and the best point to try to observe it. Since it's a significant observation challenge to distinguish the white dwarf from its brighter companion, as it radiates 10,000 times less light than Sirius A, it requires a telescope with at least a 30-centimeter aperture and excellent visibility conditions. After a periapsis occurred in 1994, the pair moved away, making it easier to distinguish them with a telescope. The apoapsis actually occurred in 2019, but from Earth's perspective, we are at a time of greater separation between the two stars, making it possible to observe its smaller companion, even with amateur telescopes. The bright stars Aldebaran, Arcturus, and Sirius were observed as having moved significantly. Sirius had advanced about 30 arc minutes, approximately the diameter of the Moon, to the southwest. In 1868, Sirius became the first star to have its velocity measured, marking the beginning of the study of celestial velocities. Previous measurements were imprecise and erroneous. Today, with more precise instruments, we know that Sirius moves at 95.5 kilometers per second relative to our Sun, which means the star is approaching us. Therefore, the star will remain the brightest in the Earth's night sky for about 210,000 years to come. It may even increase its brightness further in 60,000 years when it starts to move away again. It's expected that its brightness will slightly increase, reaching a peak magnitude of minus 1.68. Coincidentally, around the same time, Sirius will become the South Pole Star, around the year 66,270. In that year, Sirius will be about 1.6 degrees from the Southern Celestial Pole. After this period, the distance will start to increase and Sirius will become fainter, but it will still remain the brightest star in the Earth's night sky for approximately the next 210,000 years. Until Vega, another type A star that is intrinsically more luminous than Sirius, becomes the brightest star. Since 1894, irregularities have been observed in the orbits of Sirius A and B, suggesting a third, very small stellar companion, but this has never been confirmed. The best fit for the data indicated a star that would be 5 to 10 magnitudes fainter than the white dwarf Sirius B, making it difficult to observe. More recent and precise astrometric observations have ruled out the existence of a possible Sirius C of stellar mass, although they still allow for a candidate of substellar mass, such as a lower mass brown dwarf or even a large exoplanet. A 1995 study predicted a small astrometric motion, ruling out any objects orbiting Sirius A with more than 35 Jupiter masses. Effectively, there are almost certainly no additional bodies in the Sirius system larger than a small brown dwarf or a large exoplanet. The system still has several million years ahead of it, but it won't explode in a supernova because it doesn't have enough mass for that. A star only explodes in a supernova when it has more than eight solar masses, which is not the case with Sirius. Therefore, the future of the star is to become a red giant and eventually end up as a white dwarf, forming a double system of the same type of star and making way for new stars to become the brightest in the Earth's night sky. If you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next journeys into space. Consider supporting the channel so that more journeys like this one can be produced check how in the pinned comment. Do you want to go somewhere in the universe? Write suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you on the next flight.